NASCAR might finally have a solution for flat tires, plus a NASCAR arcade game was using some criminal activity. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. The off weeks for the Olympics have been brutally slow. Yes, the Corey LaJoy news was certainly something. Kyle Busch potentially injuring his wrist, that was something else. Some of the text messages I've gotten about silly season things have been truly head-scratching at times. Crazy if that's how everything plays out, but we need more information on that. NASCAR, though, did give us a bit of news on Tuesday when they said that they will be adding lifters to the rear of the NASCAR Cup Series cars, optional, of course, to help aid when cars get flat tires. So if you've watched the NASCAR Gen 7 Cup car ever since 2022 when it was first introduced, you are acutely aware of how much of a pain in the rear end it is when you get, literally, rear end, when you get flat tires with these cars. They basically are just beached. They're like whales. They're like a turtle upside down, just laying there we can't go anywhere i'm glad that i could act that out for you all completely unnecessary but that's essentially what happens they're just stuck right there on the ground and they absolutely cannot go anywhere highly unfortunate reminds me of that kid in little giants when his mom wraps him up in bubble wrap and he's just wandering yeah that's what these cars look like they're immovable at this point so nascar's trialed a few different options and basically what it comes down to is like they try to just pull them back on the tow truck right now they did trial a dolly system at iowa speedway just a few weeks ago and when they went to try to put ross Chastain's car up on the dolly they had two wreckers backed up end to end on each other they basically <laughs> They basically pulled uh, the Eiffel Tower move on Ross Chastain's car here, and it was just stuck in the middle, being held up by two wreckers, and then they put a dolly system underneath it. And NASCAR, to their credit, came out and said, hey, listen, that was not efficient time-wise at all. I believe it took somewhere around 18 minutes to get his car off the racetrack, and that is a laughably long amount of time. So they decided to go ahead and scrap that because it was not ever going to work. Credit to them for doing that. Now, though, they are putting on an actuator system, a lifter, on the rear dampers, the rear shocks area of the car. I like the idea, love the idea, absolutely think that is something that is necessary because with the new 18 inch wheels that they run on the NASCAR Cup Series cars, there's no room for an inner liner in these wheels. So when you get a flat tire, specifically on the rear end of these race cars, it is nearly impossible to drive them back to pit road and it's become a real pain in the butt. Like you're basically like, oh, if you get a flat tire on the rear, you possibly facing like four laps down at times and i mean todd gillen crew chief had a huge meltdown on the radio about it earlier this year and rightfully so you should not lose that many laps for getting a flat tire it's an inherent flaw design design flaw with this car so nascar is allowing teams to put these actuators on if they want to the lifter system now that's the only thing i don't like about this i think that it's either you do it for everybody or you don't do it at all so either all cars need to have this on or no cars have this on because i think there's going to be a lot of teams that just aren't going to put this uh piece onto the car some might but i have a feeling that they're probably not going to but essentially what it is is an actuator that mounts to the rear of the car and then when the car spins out, it gets flat tires. One of the safety crew members from the AMR safety team will drive up to the car and then pull an airline out of the truck that they you know, just got out of, plug it into the A pillar of the car. There will be a hook up there. When they plug it in right there, the air fills up the, the lifters in the back, raises the rear end of the race car up so it's no longer dragging on the ground because that's essentially what's happening here is the underbody area of the car would sit and then the wheel, there's not enough space essentially wheels here underbodies here so you can see uh, there's no let me move it over here so you can see you can see that there's no area for contact right here and that's just not creating uh, any sort of movement for the car so now when they do that it'll lift the rear end of the car up you'll have a contact patch down here again should be able to vroom off that is the thinking at least um, it's not a perfect world scenario by any means. I don't think NASCAR thinks it's a perfect world scenario either because you're still reliant on a safety team to get there, plug it in, and assume that everything will work in time. But Bozy on Twitter did post a um, a picture of what it will look like, a graphic of what the actuator will look like on the, um, well, that's just the actuator, but you can also see the uh, shock absorber here, the damper rather, um, and we can see where it's going to mount at as part of that. So at the end of the day, I think it's a good idea. Drop my phone. But, you know, not a perfect world scenario. Step in the right direction.
Now we're moving down under to Australia where somebody used the Daytona USA, the NASCAR Sega game from back in the mid 90s. We've all played it, whether you went to Dave and Buster's as a kid or just a random local arcade, you all have definitely seen Daytona USA at some point. You probably sat down on it. Heck, I mean, Dave and Buster's when I was a kid, it felt like they had a row of like 16 of them set up along the wall in the area that I grew up in. Really fun video game, right? It's just an arcade. You sit down in it. Now, obviously, sim racing with iRacing has certainly taken its cake and eaten it multiple times over from what Daytona USA was, but it was a fun game when you were younger and especially if you just went to the arcade. Well, somebody, a baddie, a gang member, a motorcycle guy down in Australia, 39 years old, got busted for using that NASCAR arcade game to store... Well, $400,000 in cash, ammunition, as well as a weapon on top of that. He was part of the bikey biker gang. And I'll be honest, if somebody comes up to me and tells me that they're part of the bikey biker gang, I'm going to laugh in their face. That sounds like something that the seven-year-olds in the neighborhood would make up while they're riding their Schwinns around or whatever kids ride these days. Actually, kids are getting really nice bikes, way nicer than when we were kids. Like these kids in my neighborhood have trek bikes to the nines, like full suspension. Like, buddy, I was like old before I finally got a full suspension bike. Now you're out here at nine years old, rocking a $1,500 bike to ride around with your friends. Get out of here with that. Anyways, you come up to me and tell me that you're part of the bikies. Do you want a binky to go along with that? Because I'm just not intimidated by anybody that's referred to as a bikie. And I get it. It's a slang term down in Australia. But for a penal colony, I thought they'd come up with a better term than bikie. Don't love it. Actually, you know, when girls talk about, oh, it gives me the ick. You tell me part of the bikey gang. I've lost respect for you and your biker gang. Did see the bike riders, though, recently. And if you haven't seen it, watch it. I think that it's an okay movie. I think there's probably a better cut of it out there um, amongst probably what was filmed. It was filmed in Cincinnati. So obviously, most of you know that's where I'm based out of. So uh, that's kind of why I really wanted to see it, just so I could see local areas and neighborhoods in it, which was definitely really cool. But um, that's motorcycle gang that's bike gang there obviously the story is how it devolved from friends wanting to be in a motorcycle group together and then turn into what essentially we look at as motorcycle gangs now so i digress so but yeah somebody out in australia use a nascar daytona usa racing arcade game to store all of his money and four hundred thousand dollars too which in australia honestly when you think about it might actually not be that much because i think everything in australia at this point is vastly overpriced heck property there is like on average over a million dollars now which is not ideal when it comes to property values. Well, it is, I guess, if you own property, but not if you're trying to buy. So for NASCAR Daytona, one thing that I did find interesting, though, reading through the police report that was posted, shout out to Daily Downforce for putting that up and at least breaking it down so I didn't have to read the entire thing. The guy that got caught with this, he was charged with possession of cash, which is with the $400,000, possession of bulletproof clothing, that is against the law, and possessing a prohibited firearm as well. But at the end of the day, somebody still used Daytona USA uh, to hide their criminal activities, which is just kind of laugh out loud funny when you get down to it. It's absurd that you would just use an arcade game to store your cash in it, but why would anybody look there? Just don't be part of the bikey gang. I get it. That's the name of like the slang for, you know, motorcycle clubs, but Hell's Angels, that strikes fear into people. Bikies? No, just not. No, sorry, can't. Not happening. So let me know in the comments what you think about NASCAR uh, having a new solution to the flat tire situation, as well as <laughs> the biker gang and the Daytona USA. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.